So how cool is that? We get to go into the school system. I mean, I love it. Yeah. Now, if you're interested in going on missions trips with us, uh, the one thing, I, I don't know if you noticed it or not, but in the video, the one thing you have to learn before you go is the missionary dance. Did you see Mary Ellen? She's going to take that on as a full-time minister around here, teaching you the missionary dance. It was great seeing her do that. Um, what a great experience they had. We're so grateful they're back. And again, we are just going to continue to live out our mission that Christ has given us. I mean, it's the mission of Christ. And we're leading people to Jesus, sending people, uh, I mean, training people to follow Jesus. And one of the ways we train, uh, we have classes. Foundation class is tonight. And this is one of my favorite ones of Foundation. If you've never been through it, I'd encourage you to join me 5 o'clock tonight. It is about living out your life purpose. We all have general purposes that God has for us. We talk a lot about those and what Scripture shows us throughout the weeks, every week as we come to church and we, we have a weekend talk. We're really talking about general purposes of God. But God has given you unique gifts and talents, and He has a purpose and plan for your life. It's very fulfilling, and some of you are you're in jobs that don't even line up with your purpose. Uh, it, it, his purpose and His gifting is for every area of your life. And as Jason said... We are, we are then sending people. So we want to help train you to live life the way Christ wanted you to and then send you into your world, whether it be your workplace, whether it be your neighborhood or missions, whatever it would be. We want to uh, you know, lead people to Jesus send, and tra train people to follow Jesus and send people to lead for Jesus. That's what we're all about. So let's talk a little bit more about our training here. How do we get equipped as a follower of Christ? We're in this series called Enemies of the Heart, and we started last week by really saying, hey, we, as we follow Christ, we are free of guilt. And we need to live free of guilt. Some of you have done some very hard things this week to deal with your guilt. You've talked with people or you've allowed God to work in your heart, but you're free. You're starting to walk toward that freedom. Today, we want to talk about the second emotional force that really is an enemy of your heart, and that is anger. Everybody say anger. anger. So anger what is it? If, if we allow anger in our hearts, it will destroy our lives. It will destroy our relationships. It will destroy our relationship with God. It will destroy our relationship with others, our careers. God wants us to be free of anger. Here's what I'd like for you to do. Take out your phones. Text me the answer to this question. We'll have some fun with it. What's the dumbest thing you've ever done when you were angry? The dumbest thing. Some of you are laughing because you know. Now, some of you may be a little more serious, a little more fun. I'm gonna share, I'll share with you one of mine when I get to where I'm reading those. But send me some responses right now, and we'll have some fun with that. Here's what I want you to do. Write this down. View anger, it's in your notes, in light of what's been done for you, not to you. Church Online, by the way, you have these notes as well. You can click on those. View anger. Let's read this together with enthusiasm. View anger in light of what's been done for you, not to you. Not to you. We just celebrated communion together. We're celebrating what God has done for us. We're going to look at this today, how important it is that we are living uh, out the life of the cross, forgiveness for others. Jesus told us to do this. You know, so many times there's somebody that we're angry toward because we feel like they owe us something. And this is about changing that around and having Christ's perspective and say, I'm going to look at anger the things I'm angry about, as though not what you've done to me, but what Christ has done for me, and I want to give that to others. Let's jump right into Ephesians chapter 4. If you have your Bibles, you can open them up. I think most of the verses are in your notes. Paul says this, don't sin by letting anger, what's it say? Control. Control you. He goes on, he says, don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. In other words, deal with it quickly. Don't let it fester. Don't let it become something it shouldn't be. For anger gives a foothold to the devil. Now the word here, foothold, is the word tapos in the Greek language that the New Testament was originally written in, and this verse was written in. Some of it's in Aramaic. But this word tapos means, the picture of it is literally like us opening up our home and our guest room and saying, devil, you can move into my guest room. You can be my guest. Paul says, that's what happens 
when we let anger become a part of our heart, we are opening up our hearts and saying, you can move right into the guest room. Now, why is that so important? Well, when we, when we talk about that, we say that, all of us go, oh, I don't want to do that. I, I mean, nobody here, I, I don't care where you're at in your spiritual journey, no, nobody would say, I have an understanding of a little bit of who the devil is, he's the enemy, and he wants to destroy my life. I'm not going to allow him just to come into my heart. And Paul says, here's one of the ways you do that. That's why it's one of the enemies of our heart. If we allow anger to settle in, we're just saying, devil, come on in. You can be my guest. And we know that he'll work havoc and destroy our lives, our relationships. Now, we all have experienced anger at different levels. Um, I'm a sports fan. I love sports. And I don't, I'm sure you guys all know this, but this week, World Series was decided. Everybody watch that? Anybody watch that? <laughs> Nobody here is a baseball fan? Football fans? Oh, okay. Okay, we'll talk more about football then. In fact, I got a series planned around the Super Bowl called Game Plan. I can't wait. We're going to have some fun with that, Super Bowl weekend. But right now, baseball just ended, okay? And for those of you who want to look like a sports geek around the water cooler at church, you need to know, I mean at work, um, you need to know, church too, but now, um, San Francisco Giants won four games straight, okay? Here, here's an illustration for you. I, I, I like sports because of people getting in there and just letting it all out, you know. In fact, I have tickets to a hockey game this Friday night, and um, somebody asked me, you know, I'm taking my family, we're going. I said, well, actually, we're going to fight, and we're hoping that a hockey game breaks out. <laughs> I mean, that's how I feel about sports. I love, you know, just getting there and, you know, guys letting it all out or whoever, you know. And, I mean, there better be some red blood on that ice this weekend. That's what I paid for, you know. That's what I want to see. Um, so I, I, that's where my anger comes out. Just let it go. We're done. And then we live our lives. I want you to see, this is a, a, a baseball manager. He was in AAA this year le, uh, for the Cleveland Indians. And uh, I mean, he absolutely lost it with his anger in this game. So I, we're going to show you a few minutes of this video. Watch this. What do you think? Is that a meltdown or what? Man, sometimes anger will make us do dumb things. So he was suspended. I mean, but it's sports. It was only for five days that he was suspended. He's back in. Uh, still the same organization. But, you know, can you imagine? This guy, I'm making fun of him today, and I'm not the only pastor probably that's used this illustration. You know, we, we do dumb things. Well, the Bible says don't, don't give a foothold to the enemy to do that. Um, and by the way, we had to cut this video down several minutes. <laughs> it went on and on. I think it was over five minutes that he stood out there and just, you know, just crazy stuff. So what do we do? Let me give you a couple of ways that are wrong ways to handle your anger. And uh, if, these, if you're living in this, today's your day to change. Don't leave here. Don't log off church online until you said, I'm going to change. I'm going to ask God to help me to change because I want you to see it's destroying your life you got to do something about it. And you're the only one that can do it. We want to partner with you. God wants to help you do this. And he'll give you the strength to do it. I mean, we have a prayer team here today. Dennis and Suzette, they'd love to pray with you afterwards. We have counselors that we're connected with, Christian counselors that can help you walk through the process. But it starts with you making a decision to say, I'm going to stop this. I'm not going to let this ruin my life anymore. I'm not going to give this to the devil. So wrong ways. First way is spewer. This is a person who expresses it. In other words... They're like the person who just vomits all over everybody. They're angry, you know it, and they just get it out there, and they feel great. 
But none of us do. They've just hurled chunks all over us. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And we're, good, you, we're glad you feel good, but we don't feel so good. Now, how many of you are sitting next to... No, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> Proverbs 29 says this. Let's read it together. A fool gives full vent to his anger, but a wise man keeps himself under control. So there's two people here. The fool, they just let it all out. You know, and they get caught on video like this manager. For the sake of posterity, we have this man, this full vent. And he's got to deal with that now. But the wise man, what's he do? Keeps it under control. How do I do that? I have no self-control. Yes, as a follower of Christ, his spirit lives in us. If you're not a follower of Christ, this is part of the benefits. His spirit lives in us. And he says, I give you the spirit of self-control. It's not Jeff control, but when I yield to him... He gives me self-control. It's such a beautiful thing. The second wrong way to handle it is a steward. This is the person who suppresses it. In other words, they're always stuffing it in. You guys know how to make stew, right? It sits on the the stove for hours, days, maybe. If a really good stew, you know, it just sits there and stews. So this is that person. The problem is, eventually, it's going to come out. Eventually, whatever you're stuffing is going to come out. I'll never forget when I was a kid... My dad, we had the, you remember the old TVs on the floor? I mean, I'm showing my age, but it was before we had flat screens and stuff was on the wall. or up. They all sat on the floor of those councils. You remember that? Anybody? Anybody here over 50? Okay. So my dad got so angry at the TV and he walked up. He wanted to kick the screen in. So he walked up and he kicked it. The screen was fine, but he broke his foot. <laughs> That's a picture of what anger will do to us and with stewards and we just let it, eventually it comes out and it comes out in the wrong way. Here's what the psalmist said. When I refuse to what? When I refuse to confess, to deal with it. And Jesus told us we're to confess our sin daily. It's part of the Lord's Prayer. What we know is the Lord's Prayer. He said, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. He said, pray this way. When you pray every day, confessing it. He said, my body wasted away and I groaned all day long. In other words, if we're not confessing the sin of anger and we're allowing it to take over our lives, it, it'll destroy us. I have two people in my life who are very important to me. Uh, they're, they're not, they don't live here. They're extended relationships in other states. But two of them this year, they've all been, both of them have been living with the same kind of symptoms in their health over the last several years. And both of them were told this year by their doctors, this is not a physical thing. You have so much anger and bitterness in you that it has turned into physical um, appearances. And now, for the first time, they're going, oh, I've got to deal. It was easy to take medication thinking it was physical. But it will literally destroy our bodies. It's an enemy of our heart. We've got to deal with this. So what do I do with my anger? Let me give you two things from Scripture, from Paul here in Ephesians. First of all, sinful anger, put out the flame. Everybody say that. Now listen, I'm, I'm not telling you just, hey, I'm going to make a decision today and hope it goes away. No, I'm saying you've got to get serious with this. You need to see today it's destroying your life, your relationship, your marriage. Your, if you're in a dating relationship, man, you need that, that person that you're thinking about marrying. They need to deal with that anger before you marry them because it will destroy your life, your career. It destroys every area of your life. Put it out. Last week, uh, we went home from Saturday night service, and we love to build fires in our fire pit in our backyard as the weather gets cooler. My daughter, Christy, who who led us in the the worship this morning, she said, I want to build fire tonight, Dad. It wasn't cool enough for me, but aren't you guys glad? We have like a nor'easter coming to Tucson. It's in the 80s, (laughs) right, Tucsonians? I know some of you online, you're in cold places. Well, it's cold for us, too. We're getting out the coats, 80s. So Christy's like... (laughs) I'm building a fire, and I'm like, it's still too hot for me. I'm still got the fan on and AC, and so she built the fire, and I said, honey, when you go to bed, because I was going to bed, getting ready for Sunday morning, I said, make sure you put the fire out. She said, I will, Dad. Got up the next morning, and I mean, there are still flames (laughs) in the fire pit, and I'm like, Chris, you forgot to put the fire out. She said, Dad, I doused it with water. Listen, this isn't just a thing where you try to put out the flame today. I'm telling you today, you need to change your life. Today, you need to get serious with God and say, God... There's anger, sinful anger in my life, and I see it's destroying me, and I need to deal with it. I'm confessing it to you, and I'm asking you to give me the strength and the power to change my life because he wants you to live a very fruitful, productive life. He wants you to live, Jesus said, a rich and satisfying life, 
You cannot, you will not do that if you allow anger to take root in your heart and let it continue to live there. This is part of actively worshiping God, one of our core values, that every day we're dealing with the sin in our lives. Here's what Paul said, Ephesians. He said, let's read this together. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Now, he gave us a lot of things there. But we see that the root of all that, it comes around. How do you get bitterness? Anger. How does all this start? rage start coming out? Anger. We allow it to take root in our hearts. We give the devil a guest room by allowing anger to be a part of our lives. He says, get rid of. Everybody say, get rid. Get rid, get rid of that. What, how do I get rid of it? Well, it starts with that confession. And then he said, instead, do this. And we do this by the fruit of the Spirit, allowing God's Spirit to live in our hearts. He said, instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving. Everybody say forgiving. forgiving. One more time, forgiving. forgiving. It's got to be forgiveness. Forgiving one another just as Christ, God through Christ is forgiving you. So now, instead of looking at anger through what's owed to me, through what's been done to me, I'm looking at it through the idea of what's been done for me. Why would I forgive? And some of you are going, Jeff, you don't know what's been done to me. You don't know my story. There's no way I can forgive. You've got to look at the cross. You've got to understand what's been done for you. All of your guilt, your shame, your sin has been forgiven. And Jesus says, I did this for you, and I want you to do this for others. Why? So that they can experience my forgiveness too for all of eternity. What's the key? The key word there is forgiveness. Write that down. Forgiveness. So I view anger in light of what's been done for me, not to me. Here's what Jesus' brother, James, said in James 1.19. He said, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. This is great stuff. Do you see there's one quick, two slows? Quick to what? Listen. listen. By the way, men, I will tell you, this is a great, great thing for us to learn in our marriages. If you're married, you're dating someone, learn this. It is a great communication tool, ladies, in your marriage. Now, I know I, I hear men all the time. We, we tease like, oh, I'm quick to listen. Whatever she says, I say, yes, ma'am, and she's in charge, and we do it. And that's funny and everything, but... That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about real communication in your relationships. Be quick to what? Listen. Listen. Slow to speak. Slow to get angry. If you, can you imagine if that manager had just lived by this principle, how his life would have been different, and I wouldn't be making fun of him today? You know, and, and it's not just me. I mean, the whole internet. I mean, if you're on YouTube, you've probably seen that video. Everybody's making fun of him. Why? Because he was not quick to listen. He was, man, he's quick to anger. And that's where, not where God wants us to live. And I know some of you are like, man, I like some good anger. I, mean, I get that. Sports, I love, man, I love seeing all. But it'll destroy your life if you let it be a part of your daily life. That's not it. It's not just competitiveness. Look what he goes on to say. And God wants to produce something in our lives. He says, human anger does not produce the righteousness that who desires? This is a part of his purpose and plan for our lives. He has a uh, uh, a righteousness, a godly righteousness that is so good for us that leads down a path to life. He says, human anger will not produce that. In fact, he just told us it'll produce the opposite. Now, I asked you earlier, what are some things that uh, you guys done dumb uh, during um, being angry? Somebody says, I broke an expensive sink. Somebody else said, I opened my mouth. <laughs> Quick to what? Speak. Quick to listen. Yeah, quick to listen. He was quick to speak. Yeah, whoever that was. It may have been a she. I don't know. I'm blaming the guys. It's safer for me, men. You know that, right? Smarter. Okay. Yeah. You guys are with me, right? We'll talk privately later. No. I, I got to tell you, one of mine, real quick, and I'm going to read some more of yours, but um, this last year, coming into December, I, I'm not a tech guy. I really don't have a problem with I don't explode in anger very few times in my life. I, I could only think of one coming into last night, but as I spoke, uh, the Lord reminded me about three or four other ones, and I'm like, oh, I'm not quite as good as I thought I was. You know what I'm saying? And so, but in, coming into the new year, I, I, I'm not a tech guy, and I know as a computer, we're very technologically minded, but it's not me, it's the other guys. They're always helping me. And so I get frustrated with computers. Anybody else? Yeah, anybody over 40 here, and you're just like, oh, dude, what the... So I, I, I do a lot of work in the evenings in my uh, studio at home, and I was working on the computer and my laptop, and it just froze up. I couldn't get to do what it did, so I just, I was ticked, man. I got so frustrated. This went on for 15 or 20 minutes, and I finally just hit the top of my laptop, like, down. Oh! 
You know, my son even, he's sitting at the other desk working, he goes, what are you doing? I, mean, I was just frustrated. I was done. That was it. But I cracked my computer. <laughs> and it wouldn't come back on. And I'm like, no big deal. I pay for the backup online through a company that I won't tell you the name because it's probably some of you are using that company and God bless you as you do. But I thought, okay, I got the backup. No big deal. I called my computer guy. He says, uh, Jeff, we can't get anything off this hard drive. We're going to have to use your backup. So I'm dealing with the backup company and there's nothing there. I'm calling them. They got their engineers working on it. And they said, you canceled this subscription. I said, no, I canceled my wife's. Oh, they, okay, we can see that. But somehow our computers changed your computer with your wife's computer. We have nothing of yours. 25 years of ministry notes and all of my studies, everything was gone. I just finished a book. It had been edited twice. It was gone. And I'm like, okay, there's got to be a way. And they said, well, you might be able to go to another level. So I, another level, it's a little more expensive. I paid them. And they're like, we can't do anything. There's one more level you can go to. And it's going to cost like six grand. It's what the FBI does. Is, and I'm like, I have no choice. So, I, you know, I'm, okay, I'm going to dive into this thing. I don't even know how I'm going to do it. And uh, I, I pay the company, or started to pay them, and they finally just said, we can't help you. There's nothing that we can retrieve from this because you hit it at just the right place. <laughs> I learned my lesson. You'd think I'd learn from my dad kicking the TV, wouldn't you? That was my dumb story. So, hey, but it was a great teaching for me because God really dealt with my heart about starting all over with all my new teaching series. And I don't look back, you know, hey, great. Thank you, Lord. I got a fresh new start at the age of 51. (laughs) Praise the Lord. Okay, I really feel very good about it now. And I had to deal with some anger there. Uh, Even still, when the company's ad comes on TV, I'm still a little bit like, Okay, God, I choose to forgive them. And I do back everything up three times different places now. Somebody else said, I lost control, just period. I lost control. I punched a hole through my bedroom door when cut up and cut up my arm that required stitches. Woo! Just a, just a good lesson, isn't it? Again, praise the Lord. Um, kicked in the bathroom door. Here's somebody, kicked a cat. That might have been righteous anger, I don't know. So since we're there, let's move on to the second one, okay? Number two. The second thing you notice is godly anger. Here's what I want to encourage you with today and challenge you to, is we need to fan the flame of godly anger. Listen, to be a follower of Christ and not allow the things that are not a part of his cause to make us angry, that's a problem. I I talk to pastors all the time, and they'll talk about uh, how their church, well, we never lead anybody to Christ. We're about something else. I'm like, you know what? You should shut your doors. Well, that's a little rude, Jeff. No. But, you know, give, give that church to somebody who's going to really do the cause of Christ. Jesus didn't die so you could just sit around and be comfortable. We should get angry. You know, when we hear that 45% of a community has AIDS because they, they don't know any better, that should tick us off. When we know that our neighbors, our coworkers, our loved ones are going to spend eternity apart from Christ, apart from God, it should make us mad in a righteous way. It's not sinful anger. Remember, Paul said, don't sin in your anger. He didn't say you won't get angry. You're going to get angry. Man, what, what are you getting angry about? This should make us mad. And we should pray, God, stir my heart with the things that stir your heart. And we see it in Jesus' life. I'm not going to take a lot of time here, but Mark chapter 3, when it came to the cause of Christ, Jesus, it says he looked around them, at them, what? angrily why because they didn't want the cause of christ the church to go forward he says he's deeply saddened and he goes on to heal the guy because the religious leader says you can't do that we should be asking god if you're just so comfortable in your christian life you've made a christian forever you're like yeah i'm just kind of coasting there's no coasting there's no coasting in christianity we've been god stir my heart the key to this is that we'd have the heart of jesus how do you look at something like sandy we should look at it and say god I'm praying for those people. It makes me tick that they're going through this. How do we look at the lost? How do we look at group people groups who are just cast aside? Nations that are cast aside in our community. People that are cast aside that don't know Jesus. It should tick us off. Now here's what I want you to do. If you would, take out your your, um, connection card or have mine filled out. Put it in the offering plate here in just a moment when it goes by. There are two steps. Number one, I'm choosing to put out the flame of sinful anger. I cannot tell you strong enough today. If you're allowing anger to have a place in your heart, 
Paul tells us this in the Bible. We are allowing the devil to have a guest room, and it's destroying your life probably in ways you don't even know. Stop it today. Through prayer, make the decision, God, I'm, I want to change. And then you may have to have some follow-ups. God changed my heart. You may need to go through some transformation in your mind, some counseling. Our prayer team's going to be here. We want to help you get through that. But the day it stops, don't walk out these doors. Don't log off online until you've made that decision. Because it's keeping you from living your purpose that God has for you, what Jesus died for. Second thing, if you say, you know, nothing really moves me. I just kind of get by, go to work every day, come home. We're just kind of getting by week to week. Listen, that's not what God has for us. We are to be passionate about the cause of Christ. And I checked in on my life. Man, I'm passionate about some things, but I want to be even more passionate. Every, I want to grow in my passion and my anger toward the things that are against the cause of Christ. So I've clicked, checked on there. I'm choosing to fan the flame of godly anger. God, stir that up in me this week. I can't even do that on my own. I can't fake that. Holy Spirit, stir that up in me this week. Let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, as we close out this time, together, I pray that you'd speak to our hearts. There are some right now that are saying, I am choosing, I'm choosing to put out the flame of anger. And for some of those, Lord, it is a very hard thing to forgive. Someone's hurt them, offended them, done something to them, stole from them. Maybe it stole their innocence, whatever it would be, God. It's painful. It's hard. But today's the day, the choice to forgive. They don't feel like it. They don't even want to but they see they need life. They need freedom. I pray for that person right now. If that's you, just make that choice. Say, God, you may even say, I I don't feel like this, but I'm choosing it. Would you help me? Give me your strength to do that. I want to live in freedom. I'm sick of living in the bondage of anger and what it's doing to my life. Help me to forgive. You may need to pray that every day this week. You may need to pray that for months. Just, Lord, I choose to forgive that person, that situation, that organization. Lord, I pray for the rest of us. Uh, Those who are saying, man, I don't follow Christ, but I kind of live a passionless life. Would you help us, Lord, as we choose today? Would you fan the flame of godly anger in our lives? Things that are against the cause of Christ. Results we see in our community that go against what you have for us. This rich and satisfying life in our community, our neighbors, our loved ones. Fan that flame within us. We can't do that on our own. Holy Spirit, do that in our lives. For those who are on fire for you, Lord Jesus, that this week you would stir that flame even more. Now as we're praying, if you're listening to my voice, you're at church online, you're you're joining us, or you're here in this auditorium and you're not a follower of Christ, that's where it starts. What God has for you is a life of purpose, a life of freedom. I want to encourage you to pray this prayer. I want to lead you through this prayer in just a moment. You begin this relationship, this journey with Christ. Here's what he wants to do. He wants to forgive all of your sins, all the guilt, all the shame of your past. He wants to give you the power and strength to live today while you're here on earth, and he wants to give you the promise of eternal life with him. Just pray this prayer to begin that journey. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to invite you into my life. I ask you to forgive my sin the guilt and shame of my past to fill me with your presence. Fill me with your purpose. Give me eternal life with you. Lord, I pray for the people that just prayed that prayer for the first time. Give them a sense of your love. Give them the power to experience your love. And I pray for all of us as a church this week as we go forward. Speak to our hearts about anger. Sinful anger, that we would confess it. Stir up in us godly anger. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all this week. I'm going to allow Phil to close out the service at Church Online, and Mike's going to close out this service. I look forward to seeing you next week as we continue.